Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Eric, for this platform. Uh, like you, you can see, uh, I am Lalita, and I am from Hyderabad, a uh, town in the southern part of India, a city in the southern part of India. Um, I have been telling stories since three years uh, to children and to adults. And today I have a story which I have been reading at different stages of my life. And at every stage, it has brought out different emotions. And uh, today, as I tell you the story, it is completely different, the emotion I have for the story. And I hope you get it too. So, I'll begin the story. It is written by Rabindranath Tagore. Once upon a time, not very long ago, in a small town in Andhra Pradesh, which is in India, the southern part of India, the sun was just rising. It had rained all night and the smell of petrichor was filled in the air. The raindrops still on the leaves and the flowers made it look very, very beautiful. The postmaster, who was sitting in the veranda, was enjoying the beautiful morning. He heard somebody singing. On the branch of a pomegranate tree, there were two birds very much in love with each other. And it was a feast for to get them. That was the meaning of the song. He ran in the direction from where the sound came from. There was a little girl sweeping the front yard and singing oblivious to her surroundings. Called out, Ratalu! Ratalu! She was still sweeping. He went closer. He put his hand on her shoulder and turned her around. It was not Ratalu. That little girl was startled, scared. He walked back to the veranda, sat down. What was he thinking? How will Rattalu come here? Why will she be here? What would she be doing now? Maybe she was also sweeping and singing. As she, he sat there thinking about Rattalu, his thoughts took him back to the day he met her for the first time. He didn't want to go there. He tried everything that was possible. The owner of a mill in Undarajavaram, a small remote village in Andhra Pradesh, wanted a post office in his village because he thought it would help him. So he requested for one and his request was approved. And the postmaster got his posting orders to Undrajavaram. He had always lived in a town. He did not want to go and live in a remote village. But there he was, standing in the post office, which was a small room, which also served as a living accommodation. Because all his attempts to revoke the orders failed. As he stood there, wallowing in self-pity, he heard a feeble sound. He turned around to see where it was coming from. He saw a small girl, maybe 13 or 14 years. She wore a sari, which was very old. She draped it a little above her ankles. Her hair was disheveled. She looked very shabby. She wore a lot of bangles. And she said very softly, Aigar Pampar Paniki. Oh, this is Rattalu, the head man was speaking about. She is going to clean his house and cook for him. He did not like her at all. But what choice did he have? She would come every day in the morning, 
sweep the front yard, the backyard, singing all the time, and then wait at the door. She would wait for him to call her inside. She would go only after he called her. She would go inside and cook for him. Undrajivaram was a very small village. There was not much work to do. So the post master had a lot of time for himself. He would read. He had brought a lot of books with him. But sometimes he felt like talking to someone. He felt like discussing something which he read in those books. But who would he talk to? There was nobody who was educated in the village. He longed for company. A few days later, when he was having his lunch, which Ratalu made, he called her and he said, Ratalu, how did you learn to make this? This is so delicious. Did your amma teach you? No, I have never seen my amma. I'm an orphan. Oh, this tastes just like how my mother made. And, you know, my sister and me, we love this. And he started speaking to her about his mother, his sister, his family in the town. And then on, every day, he would speak to her. Everything about his life in town, his family, his friends, whatever he did there. And little Rattalu felt as if she was a part of that family. And one day, he called her inside and he said, Rattalu, I'm going to teach you how to read and write. And so she, so excited, she began to learn to read and write. And after everything, after the whole work she would do in that house, she still took time to finish her lessons because she wanted to impress him. And he was impressed. And he also found that there was some change in her. She still wore that old, she still draped that old sari, but her hair was not disheveled anymore. She, she adorned her hair with those little flowers that grew in the garden. She was not shabby or unkempt anymore. She still sang, but the singing was different. There was something different in the way she sang. Temmeretho taya dala, tummelelo saya dala, temmelelo sara dala, tummelelo saya dala, sara dala saya dala, sara dala saya dala. Vannale kaadu vagale kaadu, yenni neer chindi ninnati maguva. Vannale kaadu vagale kaadu, yenni neer chindi ninnati maguva. Dinkalu, Midialu, Punkalu, Odimelu, Emo, Yavari Dokani, Isiri, Vadasari. It was a song of coming of age. She knew the changes that were happening in her heart and in her mind. That was a song a girl who was turning into a woman would sing. A few days later, when she was standing at the door, waiting for the postmaster to call her in, he did not call her. She waited and waited. It was, I think, 10 minutes. And then she pushed the door open to see what was wrong. She went inside. He was on the bed. He looked very sick. She went inside. She put her hand on his forehead. It was very hot. A little lamb sprang into action. She became a mother. She nursed him back to health. She stayed with him morning and night. And when she was sure that he was getting a little better, she started going back home in the night. But she would come back early in the morning to see if he needed something. And then one such morning when she came, she saw him packing his suitcase. She asked, are you going somewhere? Yes, I'm going back to my town. Oh, when will you come back? Never. 
I am done with this place. I have sent so many letters for a transfer, but they have rejected them. I am quitting. I am going back to my town. I will never come back to this place. She could not believe what she heard. After a few seconds, she said, Will you take me with you? Huh? What? Why will I take you with me? And he laughed. He did not know what hurt her more, his rejection or his laughter. She went when about finishing her chores. And then that night, she could not sleep. She knew early in the morning, the boat would take him away. Why can't he take me with him? Am I not his family? She decided that in the morning she will go and insist that he take her with him. She ran early in the morning. He was ready to go. She just, just opening her mouth, he outstretched, he stretched his hand as if he was giving her something. There was money in his hand. He said, take this money. And I also told the postmaster who's coming now, take care of you. She didn't want his money. She didn't want him to tell the postmaster to take care of him. Her sobs were loud. She started crying and she ran away. The postmaster had no time for all this. He got into the boat. The boat started moving away. The village faded. But he saw a small figure standing at the bank. It was Rattalu. Why did she want to come with him? And how did she think he will take her? Did he tell his family? Anyway, this is for her own good, he thought. He thought that on that day when he left the village, that it was for her own good. And today, when he was sitting in the veranda, he still thought it was for her own good. But why? Why does everything remind him of her? Why does a moonlit night remind him of her? Why? It's a beautiful morning like this morning today. Remind him of her. Why the sound of bangles reminds him of her? Why when somebody sings, he thinks of her? Okay, thank you very much. Huh. You mentioned that this story has had different meanings to you in different stages of your life. Can you tell us about that? Yes. I had uh, read the story as a child. At that time, um, actually when in the story, Rabindranath doesn't mention about any relationship between the postmaster or Rattani. He just leaves it to the imagination of the reader. So when I was a child, I was angry and I felt that Rattalu was an orphan and he could have taken her with him because she felt it was um, he was a part or she was a part of his family. But when I grew up and when I read the same story again, I felt that there was something, some longing she had. There was something, she was growing up to be a woman and she had some longing, she had some feelings for him. But uh, the postmaster did not re reciprocate. Then when I became a mother and I taught the same lesson to my child, uh, I could not uh, tell him that maybe she was changing or maybe she had feelings for him. I told him the same thing what I felt as a child. Maybe she felt that she's an orphan and she wanted a family. Because I wanted him to understand and I wanted him to have his own perception of the story. And today when I was preparing for this narration, I again felt that maybe she was really had, maybe she really had some feelings and maybe the postmaster also had some feelings which he did not want to acknowledge. So this is up to any, the reader who whatever you want to understand whatever you want to perceive, however you want to end the story. He's just left it open. 
to us. Wonderful. Uh, Denise. I'm just curious, do you know what the translation of the song is, what the words are that this are being sung? Yeah. Could, could you share them? Because I think that that, I, I would like to know what the words were. And did you know what they were when you heard the story? Oh, this is Rabindranath Tagore. It's from Bengal. And this is a story which had a backdrop of a Bengali village. And I made it my story because I speak Telugu. And I made the story, uh, I mean, I bought it into Andhra Pradesh where we speak Telugu. And these songs are my own. I have, been, I have added these songs to the story. So the story, I when I sang the first one, it was about the birds on the pomegranate tree. And the next one, which I sang, was when she was changing. It was about a little girl who was changing into a woman, how she has transformed and how she dresses up in a different way, how every uh, move of her is now different, how she's conscious of her body, how she walks. Great. You know, it's interesting how we we hear a story, we read a story, and then we uh, we live with it uh, for, for many, many years. It, it's a companion to us. Great. Okay. Anybody else? Any thoughts? Comments? Questions? Kevin. Thank you, sir. Now, first of all, I was really, uh, it was really uh, marvelous to hear how this story has uh, morphed into different forms when you were in different phases of your life. And uh, even uh, when you were um, saying about how you have added uh, your own elements into the story, how you have uh, made a Telugu version of the story from the Bengali version, which was original, it was really marvelous. And, First of all, the narration and everything, it took really to a countryside, uh, um, you know, uh, a story which was, uh, which has really emotions that are not exactly labeled. It's like, it's raw in the content, right? It's left to interpretation. It can be interpreted as romance. It makes sense. It is interpreted as uh, unrequited love. It makes sense. It uh, is uh, interpreted as a, uh, some desperation for some form of affection. Again, that makes sense. Um, and again, when you were saying all this, this was like, I, I'm kind of curious, like, uh, does the story mean anything to you personally? Like, how are you connected with the story? Yeah, when I heard the story for the first time, I had a very, very wonderful English teacher in school. And the way she told the story was something which touched me. She did not give her any interpretation. Maybe that's how they have to teach us the story. And we were asked to give her our, her, our own interpretation of the story. So, and it stayed with me because she told the story very beautifully. I mean, she was teaching the lesson, but she told it as a story. So that was the first thing. And that is why I still remember because she told it in such a wonderful way. And when I grew up, I stumbled upon the story again. Somewhere I read it. And uh, obviously, like I told you, it changed my perspective. I thought maybe she really had some feelings for him. And again, we still have the same lesson in uh, my child's textbook. And when I was teaching him, again, I went through those emotions. So... It is a beautiful story. If I have chosen that story today, it is because it has stayed with me and it has made an impact. Rohini? Hi, uh, everybody. Uh, Lalita, as usual, it's a beautiful take. And uh, I have read the, I mean, so the Bengali version of this story. And uh, when you have 
mentioned the Andhra Pradesh name, I, it immediately struck my mind. Yes, it is her version of the story. As usual, that is really beautiful. And the little subtle interludes that you have added to make it more colorful, that was beautiful. And yes, I could somehow, you know, uh, I just went back down the lane of those, you know, teenage days wherein, you know, the first crush or, you know, that kind of attraction wherein we would want ourselves to showcase beautifully when we, you know, have some feelings for somebody and all these things. So much relatable uh, to the feelings of a teenage girl or a growing woman. So that was really wonderful. It was, Thank it was you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, thank you very much, Lalitha. Thank you so much, Eric. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Great.